What's up, everybody? So on this episode of Layer by Layer, we're going to talk about MVPs, the new Etsy app coming out, Filament, and a couple of other things. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, just real quick reminder, uh, the Massage Roller Kickstarter. If you want the 3D model files for these, do grab them. There's only about four days left on that uh, when this podcast will go up. Uh, there's a number of different rollers. You can get 10 different files that you can either print yourself um, and we can run through them or you can actually get the prints themselves if you're interested in that. So go do check that out. Um, minimum viable product. So we're working on a video right now around product design um, and kind of the philosophy that we use here at Slant3D for creating products. Um, and one of the parts of that that have come together is minimum viable product. And I wanted to expand on it here to workshop some stuff with you here live. But MVP, minimum viable product, is very often misunderstood inside the world of startups and even product design. Uh, minimum viable product, people very often misconstrue for minimum viable garbage. Uh, it is very common for a startup to consider something that is incomplete to be something that is launchable. And that's incorrect. A minimum viable product is a fully complete, finished product but maybe not feature complete. It is what customers will pay you for, basically. It is not, and, and this is what people very often misunderstand, because what startups often do is they use MVP as an excuse to launch crap, and that's not what it is. It's like, imagine if Facebook was fully present and none of the buttons worked. That's not an MVP, that's an incomplete application. But imagine Facebook where you, the photo function doesn't exist. You can't upload videos. You can't even connect with friends. It's just a chat room. That's a fully complete application that works. And if it's solving a problem that's useful, that's okay. Uh, we're working to define this more, but MVP is something that we use really heavily here at Slant3D. So like right now with, with Filament. Filament, the MVP at this moment is the clear batch of filament that we'll be releasing here in about a week. That MVP is a feature complete product. You can print with that filament. It is good quality stuff. It's not garbage that we squirted out and then said pre-order this and that kind of stuff. It's finished product. But we also, but we are not offering 10 or 50 different colors. We're not at offering five different materials. We're offering one material that is low cost and good quality. So that's, a, a version of a minimum viable product of will people give a, you money for the product um, and will they have a good experience from having made that transaction, that exchange of value. Uh, so that's a really long-winded explanation of what we're going to talk about in like 30 seconds in that coming video, but it, we're talking about more on the podcast in general because the, the greater explanation is necessary because it's just a lot of people really misunderstand what this is. Um, and it's something that I harp on all the time, right, too. It, MVP is almost as a, a cliche of an idea that we bring up here inside of the company as anything else. But it, it's something that you build, introduce, and iterate on. Uh, this YouTube channel. This YouTube channel is an excellent example of product evolution. If you just go to like the channel video page and just scroll through basically the timeline of the history of thumbnails, uh, you will see the evolution of the videos from when we started three years ago posting videos to now. You'll see the change in cadence. You'll see the change in styles. You'll see the change in topics. You'll see the change in uh, titles. Um, but the minimum viable product for the YouTube channel was a camera on a guy talking about stuff and then moving on from there. And then once once that was useful, once an audience existed that was happy with that, that you guys were happy watching that, then okay, well we add in more editing, we add in better designed content, we add in more B-roll, uh, we increase what uh, better examples, printed examples of what we're talking about conceptually. And we improve the quality and increase the number of features of the product 
but the product is still the same. It is information about how to mass produce parts with 3D printing. It's the same product today as it was three years ago with our first videos. Um, so it's not, it, but the YouTube channel is a really nice, it, it's like the evolution of man kind of chart that uh, show, you can look at and you can kind of see the style. Because once you have an MVP, it is a question of how fast can you change and improve and grow that thing and, and make it better that will define your success. If you start with an MVP and then you never change, then you, you will fail. But if you're able to learn and improve and evolve over time, then you can create a product that is really useful. Um, and this YouTube channel is a, a big version of that success. I'm, thanks to all of you guys, we seem to be doing something right. And we've had quite a bit of growth in the last um, several months uh, and certainly in the last year when we really harped on YouTube. So thank you all for watching. Um, I'm glad these videos are better than a stick in the eye. Uh, and the, the team that's been working on them has been doing a great job. Um, and hopefully we can continue to put that out there. Quick note on that, warning to everybody, and we kind of talked about this last week, uh, we are going to be moving into the Christmas season. So the content style might change a little bit and become slightly more intermittent. Uh, because we're all just going to be busy working on other stuff. Um, but here for the next few weeks, and certainly up through October, the cadence will be basically the same. Uh, but it helps if you guys can tell us topics that you want to talk about. And w with topics, it'd be really cool if you could hit us up ideas of stories. We really want stories of examples of real 3D printed products. So if you can shoot those to us, that would be fantastic. Um, w yeah. So shoot us those kind of things. If you see any of them go by that you don't think we know about or something like that, please let us know because they kind of write themselves. It's just a retelling of it in a digestible format. So those are really good pieces of content that we like to do because they're real examples and they're just frankly kind of easier, but really helpful for the community too, because they show real examples and they're not, they're not theoretical of like, oh yeah, this is how you make a, a 10,000 parts. It's like, there's somebody who made 10,000 parts. So it's always fun to do those videos, like Out of Darts or uh, the guys at Ford who are doing parts down there or all the rest of it. We've got like a shoe video coming out here eventually. Um, yeah, so if there's any other stories that you guys can hit us up with, that would be fantastic. Uh, so that's all that. But yeah, if you want to see like the evolution of a product, I really recommend like scrolling through our YouTube channel because you'll see that evolution. And it's really nifty to look at to see how we learned and evolved over time. Um, it's like watching, going from like a rotary phone up to an iPhone. That's, that's kind of like what it looks like. If you're, if you're in, interested in media and that kind of stuff, it's a really interesting thing to look at. Uh, and if you're interested in product design and evolution, it's also an interesting thing to look at. So there's that. Uh, filament. Uh, literally right now, uh, we are running the batch of Crystal Clear for the filament release. Uh, it is, uh, we're going to get it all piled up and it will be down spooled. Uh, we spool onto large spools and then we spool down to smaller spools because that's the most efficient way to do it. Um, so right now that, uh, that new extruder that we committed to this project is actually doing that. We are still waiting on the one kilogram spools, which is might cause an issue on all of this stuff. But we're working to get that all done, uh, and we will get those out just as soon as we possibly can. Uh, but yes, filament, we're expecting to launch in the next week or two. A uh, final announcement of that will be forthcoming. Uh, probably in YouTube uh, notifications is like a final launch date. And then, of course, a video announcement will come out on YouTube where we'll introduce that filament and kind of the first stage of the, the plan and the next things to come down over the next little while. Um, but thank you all who were interested in the the master plan uh, that came out this last week or so. There, uh, Yeah, the, the creation of the filament uh, – is going to be a fun process to work on and a fun project to work on that we think will be really, really useful. And thank you guys all for your support. And we should be getting that out very soon to you uh, as soon as we can get it packaged in a way that's useful. Um, okay. Etsy app. Okay. So we've, we've talked about this before, uh, but we, we developed an API uh, that gives access to our print farm. Uh, we got the beta version of that done and it was being tested with like the POD at print on demand app and that kind of thing. Uh, we have integrated it with an Etsy application. 
that allows you to plug an Etsy store into our prick farm so that with Christmas coming, you guys are able to access thousands of machines uh, to support uh, your e-commerce operations so that you can focus on customers and product. So that will be releasing very soon, and there will be a formal announcement on that coming out real soon also. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I, I want to say too much more about the Etsy app until it actually comes out, but it's going to be pretty sick. Um, just what with what it enables. That being said, it's an MVP. <laughs> I I did not mean to do that. That was not the point of this. I didn't mean to lead it in of like an MVP is a, a limited product. Um, but no, the, it, it will be. It, it's an initial uh, launch product. So yes, it's going to have basic functionality there. Uh, and then we will expand it over time and iterate based on your guys' feedback. So uh, that app will be released and will be functional, but we're going to run into some stumbling block or something, most likely, because as soon as you launch a product, people break it. Uh, it never survives the real world. Something goes wrong that we're just not aware of, um, and we're, but we're going to work through those issues here over the next uh, several weeks because something's going to come up. We do our best to test. We do our best to strength test it, and we push it up. Oh, we we boosted our servers uh, just this week. We basically quadrupled the capacity of our servers uh, in order to accommodate the processing from like the POD app, and then yes, this new Etsy app that is coming online. So hopefully we have enough compute power behind all this stuff uh, from testing. It looks good, but at the same time, Demand has been really great for these things. So we want to make sure that we don't compromise user experience. It, it's good when a site crashes uh, from too much use, but it's bad when a site crashes from too much use. So uh, yeah, we, we radically uh, increased uh, our server capacity um, for these apps to make sure that they are reliable. Because yes, if you guys are going to uh, have some portion of your business operating on our server farms and systems, it has to be very reliable um, and you have to be able to depend on us. So uh, we, we've bolstered the infrastructure there to where that should be very doable. Um, and if something breaks within it, uh, we will work as fast as we can to fix it. So yes, with the launch next week, the dev team will be standing by to stick our fingers in the dike as it goes by. Uh, but no, that that's it, it's going to be really cool to get that released, uh, and the team is working on a number of other projects that should be released fairly soon. Also, um, fantastic. Okay, uh, let's see. That's pretty much it on that. But yeah, I really do want to make uh, another call for stories because we don't know what we don't know. And this, this is the value of like this YouTube channel. There are way more of you guys out there than there are of us. So you know of stories and people doing stuff that we just can't find because either they're not notarized or they're just not widely known. Uh, for example, like when we did the story about like Out of Darts, the Nerf gun mod shop in Seattle, um, I've known Luke and his operation for years, but he's not widely known. Uh, because he works in, in, in Nerf, which is a, a kind of a niche industry. It's really cool and it's an awesome operation, but it's not commonly known. So if, if you know any examples of that kind of a thing, we'd love to see them. Somebody who runs an Etsy shop that makes thousands of cookie cutters like Baker Street or whatever it happens to be. What some example of, of people who are doing cool stuff. And quite frankly, if they've never been interviewed or it's not like a public story, but they just want to have the story, we're open to that. I'd love to talk to folks about that kind of stuff because we want to get these examples out there to show the world the scale of 3D printing because mass production with 3D printing is very doable. It is done. And it's very clearly a better way of doing stuff because you eliminate inventory, you eliminate molding, you eliminate the waste of unsold inventory. Uh, it's a really good process, but people, there's not enough social proof in it in a professional context of how to do it. There's uh, the, the hobbyist community that makes stuff for Etsy and that kind of thing, but that doesn't qualify it to move up to like corporate level kind of stuff, which is kind of the reason we do this YouTube channel is to communicate the examples where it has been really successful in a very hard, real way. 
Um, so if you know those stories, please do share them with us because we'd love to share them even more broadly. Um, yeah, like we say, the channel has been growing and we'd like to continue to use that, that megaphone that we've been blessed with to spread this information around to the broader world to know how, how it's valuable and why it's valuable and the benefits that can come from it. Because the industry itself has been kind of self-flagellating and let, yeah, just whipping ourselves of like, oh, 3D printing is not good enough. 3D printing is not good enough. And it's like, 3D printing is fine. You can make fantastic products with desktop 3D printers. You just have to know how to use them and give them the time to be understood and to, to find their spot inside of your organization. Uh, the benefits of it are enormous, but there is a, a gap of knowledge about how to do it well and correctly, which is why we do things like this YouTube channel. Um, but more examples are always necessary, needed, and awesome. So we'd like to do more examples that are awesome, needed, and necessary. So if you let us know down in the comments, please let us know down in the comments. And we, we do read them. We read them all. Even the guys who are like dinging us, we, we read almost every comment that goes by. Can't always respond to all of them. There's quite a few anymore. Uh, but do, yeah, keep on sending the stuff to us because it is really, really helpful. Um, let's see. That pretty much covers that. Um, yeah, the MVP was kind of like the big one. That's the That was like the rant for this podcast, I suppose. But yeah, the product design video, when it comes out, we're basically going to go through our, our fundamental design philosophy here at Slant 3D. Because my background is product design in robotics and now and software and now 3D printing. Um, and it's informed by a number of different styles. And we've, we've used this at this company because 3D printing enables a lot of the software ideas of evolving a product to be possible with physical stuff. But there's restrictions of physical stuff that people don't really realize. So yes, we're going through and we're kind of qualifying what our process is for what is a good product and how do you get it out the door. Um, and hopefully it's useful to other folks, but just hopefully also kind of pulls back the curtain on how we do stuff here. Um, it should be kind of fun and interesting and hopefully useful. But that will be coming down here in the future. Uh, but yes, we have an Etsy app coming out that will let your store connect to our print farms. We have filament coming out very soon that will be the first step on the road to $10 filament per uh, $10 per kilogram filament. And uh, we got several, a lot more videos coming. We've still been staying consistent at about four to five videos per week. And we hope to maintain that here into the near future. There's a number of videos in the can that are going to be a lot of fun and are really cool demos. Um, and we'll continue to do like the design for mass production printing series and so on and so forth. So the future is bright, um, even though it's going to start getting cold and snowy and uh, I guess joyful here with the Christmas season coming up. So until next time, I'll let you all go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, comment down below with any stories that you've got. Always happy to hear from you. Go check out the massage rollers if you haven't already because there's only four days left, uh, and then that Kickstarter will be gone. Um, but beyond that, have a great day, everybody.